All right, so we'll continue with part two. We're going to do muscles of the neck and trunk, but we'll also go into the upper extremity here. Uh, let's start off with the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the prime mover of inspiration. Um, we also want to talk about the internal and external intercostals. So the external intercostals originate from the inferior margins of ribs 1 through 11. They insert on the superior margins of ribs 2 through 12. The internal intercostals originate from superior margins of ribs 1 through 11. They insert onto the inferior margins of ribs 2 through 12. So if you compare the two, they're almost the opposite. Nerve supply are the intercostal nerves for both. But the external intercostals, the action will be to elevate and protract the ribs to cause inflow of air, whereas the internal intercostals will depress and retract the ribs to expel air. So make sure you know the difference there. If you look at the diaphragm itself, uh, again, it's the prime mover inspiration, but if you look at this uh, diagram here of the diaphragm, you'll see that the esophagus, the inferior vena cava, and the aorta actually go through that. So if you have issues with breathing and breathing mechanics, it can influence the GI system and the cardiovascular system. So it's a big dome uh, sheet of muscle. It originates from the xiphoid process, the ribs 10 through 12, costal cartridges of 5 through 9, the lumbar vertebrae, so it has an attachment to the lumbar vertebrae. So if you have issues with breathing, you can affect your low back. Um, inserts on that uh, white tendinous uh, central tendon. Uh, the nerve supplies the phrenic nerve, so if you have the hiccups, you have irritation of the phrenic nerve. And action, again, is the prime mover for inspiration, but it also compresses the abdominal viscera. Now, there's lots of research on the diaphragm. I think orthopedically, the, uh, the diaphragm is overlooked, but it is the source of a lot of discomfort and musculoskeletal uh, disorder. So you should definitely pay attention to your patient's breathing mechanics. Uh, I've taken many classes on it. I, mean, I could tell, just talk days on the importance of the diaphragm, and I find it very beneficial since I've incorporated... Uh, um, the use of proper breathing into my patient's care. Now, let's look at the abs. People love the abs, uh, you know, the beach body abs. Uh, you got rectus abdominis, originates on the pubis, uh, inserts on the xiphoid process, costal cartridges 5 through 7, uh, nerve supply or intercostal nerves 7 through 12. It flexes the lumbar spine, it stabilizes. Um, there's different EMG studies out there, but crunches to a certain height where your scapulas come off the table seem to do well as far as recruiting the rectus abdominis. Uh, planks do a good job as well. Um, for external abdominal oblique, side planks are really good. Uh, the bicycle uh, ab crunches uh, are really good. Um, again, you have to be careful with the pressure that it puts on your neck. Uh, so good form is always key. Um, external abdominal obliques they originate on ribs 5 through 12 inferior 8 ribs they insert on xiphoid process linea alba the nerve supply is intercostal nerves 8 through 12 il iliohypogastric nerve and the ilioinguinal nerve they tend to stabilize the actions and unilateral contralateral rotation so the left oblique will cause right rotation Okay. Transverse abdominis uh, originates on the inguinal ligament, iliac crest, thoracolumbar lumbar fascia, inserts on the xiphoid process, linea alba, pubis, inguinal. This is the, the vacuuming muscle, so the hollowing out. So if you were taking your belly button and suck it towards your spine and suck in your gut like you do on the beach, <laughs> that's your transverse abdominis working right there. Uh, the nerve supply is intercostal nerves, 8 through 12 iliohypogastric nerves and ilioinguinal nerves and of course it compresses the abdominal contents. Um, now we go into the anterior chest uh, above and we got the pec major and minor. They originate, pec major originates on the clavicle, the sternum, costal cartridges 1 through 6. Aponeurosis of the external abdominal oblique so it has a little bit of uh, attachment from there. It inserts into the intertubercular groove of the humerus. Uh, the nerve supply is medial and lateral pectoral nerves. And what does it do? It flexes and AD ducts and medially rotates the humerus. So like you're giving someone a big bear hug. Okay. 
uh, pectoralis minor. This is very tight if you have very poor posture and rounded shoulders. So you'll find tenderness at the pec minor. Originates on ribs three through five, but inserts at the coracoid process. Uh, nerve supply is medial and lateral pectoral nerves. Action is that it protracts the scapula. Okay, so make sure you stretch out the pec minor, otherwise you'll get really rounded shoulders. Now the serratus anterior, one of my favorite muscles, uh, originates on ribs one through eight, to some, some to nine, and inserts on the medial border of the scapula. Uh, the nerve is the long thoracic nerve. The main purpose of this, and it's very good in postural control, is that holds scapula against the rib cage, but it's also a prime mover for forward reaching, and we like this uh, uh, for the one inch punch. So you guys remember Bruce Lee, right? Check out this guy's lats. Amazing. Look at his serratus. Amazing. This guy's just overall amazing, right? I mean, yeah, he's probably had very minimal body fat, probably five, six percent, but that's how I look at him. He's just solid and cut. Uh, I showed you pictures of three to four percent body fat. And that's a little too extreme, but he's a, he's a good healthy five to seven percent. Um, tough to say exactly, but that's my guess. Remember for guys, in order to see your abs, you have to be less than uh, seven to eight uh, percent anyway. Now here's an uh, interesting weakness that you have in your serratus anterior. So I put weakness in scapula, but it's really weakness in the serratus anterior that causes this winging. So if you look at uh, the top picture, um, she has bilateral serratus anterior weakness, but on the bottom picture, he has unilateral, and this was uh, um, an injury from pitching. Okay, so damage to the nerve, and therefore you can see the other side is fine. So again, if you see wing of the scapula, you can suspect weakness or some kind of damage to the nerve supply to the serratus anterior. Uh, the lats, lats are a great muscle, a uh, very large muscle. They originate from the vertebrae of T7 through L5, lower three or four ribs, the thoracolumbar lumbar fascia, iliac crest, inferior angle of the scapula. So there's a broad range of origins and you must know all of these and they insert into the intertubricular groove of the humerus. The nerve supplies the thoracal dorsal nerve. So what do the lats do? Well, when your arms are down, they only adduct and immediately rotate the humerus, uh, and they can extend the shoulder. But really, with the arms overhead, it can pull the body up and forward. And so the lats play a key role when you're trying to pull yourself up. So pull-ups, lat pull-downs are great exercises. Um, Terry's major forms the inferior angle to lateral border of the scapula, um, inserts on the intertubricular groove, so same insertion as the lats. Um, the nerve is the subscapular nerve, and what does Terry's major do? It extends and medially rotates the scapula, so very similar to what the lats do. Okay. Now, <clears throat> these muscles, which are the rhomboids, rhomboid minor, and levator, are the ones that usually tend to get really tight, and students and patients will complain of neck pain and upper back pain. So if you look at the origin of rhomboid major, um, originates on spinous process of T2 to T5, that should be T5, inserts on medial border of scapula, uh, nerve is posterior scapular nerve, and the rhomboid major retracts the scapula, fixates the scapula during arm movements. Rhomboid minor originates from spinous process of C7 to T1, inserts on the medial border of the scapula, uh, nerve supply, is the posterior scapular nerve, and so I switched the two, but the action is to retract the scapula. So if you see this uh, right here, this should be action is retract the scapula, and the nerve supply is the posterior scapular nerve. Just change those a little bit. Make sure you don't fall asleep. I was keeping you guessing, thinking that what kind of nerve is called retract the scapula. <laughs> The levator scap, that's what you rub on your neck. You're like, ah, oh, man, my neck hurts. So it originates on the transverse process of C1 to C4. So this is why we do the bones first. So you understand where, oh, where are all these things? Where is the spinous process? Where is the medial board of the scapula? If you didn't learn the bones the first time, then you're having to relearn not only the bones, but now the muscles as well. So you're trying to learn two things at once. Instead, you should have just taken the time and learned all the bones. Um, inserts on the superior angle of the medial border, so that's levator, and nerve supply spinal nerves three, four, and five of the cervical spine via the dorsal scapular nerve, dorsal meaning posterior, 
And what is the lever scap? Elevates the scap, flexes the neck if the scapula is fixed, and retracts the scapula, depresses the scapula. So there's a lot of actions that this does. Here's a pretty good model uh, that you could typically see. Um, pec major, pec minor, internal intercostals, external intercostals, serratus is right here. You got the rectus abdominis, internal obliques, external obliques. Now remember the fibers for external obliques go in towards the belly button and then the fibers for internal obliques go out. Okay, so they go laterally and in external go medially. And here's the tennis inscriptions here. Um, if you look at the posterior, you got semispinalis, you got the splenius muscle, supraspinatus here, rotator cuff, infraspinatus, rotator cuff. Uh, you got delts right here, that mostly that's the posterior delt, rhomboid minor, rhomboid major. You got the teres minor, another rotator cuff. You got teres major, traps. This is more specifically lower traps. Erector spinae, um, that is part of three from lateral to medial. So iliocostalis, longissimus, spinalis. The way I remember the erector spinae group is I love sushi. Um, okay, so lateral to medial, I love sushi. Iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. Here's the serratus posterior, which is different than the serratus anterior. Uh, lats, these are your lats, glute med and glute max. Again, here's the erector spinae, I love sushi. They straighten the spine. Um, you'll see little, they, they go from the cervical spine to the sacrum. If you look at this, you have multifidi that stabilizes ad adjacent vertebrae. A lot of people that work on those Swiss balls are trying to recruit rotatories and multifidi by providing unstable surface. So the vertebrae have to stabilize. So it's a way to do core stabilization. The quadratus lumbar lumborum aids respiration by stabilizing the diaphragm and rib 12. A lot of times when p uh, patients have tightness in the quadratus lumborum, they can really have severe low back pain. So keeping that stretched out nice and healthy is very beneficial. Now, now, as we start going from the trunk to the muscles of the upper extremity, uh, we'll review a little bit of the scapula as well. But just to kind of give you a, a, an idea, you get the biceps anterior. Remember, biceps means two heads, brachii meaning arm. Triceps says three heads, brachii meaning arm. So three heads found in the arm. And don't use arm and forearm interchangeably because that's different. Arm is what you call your shoulder here and your forearm is here. Okay, so make sure you use terminology correctly. Here's the pronator teres, flexor carpi ulnaris. Now look at the names of these and think about why. So flexor carpi ulnaris is going to flex, carpi meaning wrist and radial, radialis on the radial side, right? So make sure you, instead of just memorizing words, you're actually thinking about it and why, why is it named what it's named? So flexor carpi ulnaris flexor digitorum superficialis. Okay, here's the triceps brachii. Here's the extensor carpi radialis, extensor carpi radialis brevis, adductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus, uh, lateral epicondyle of humerus, extensor carpi ulnaris, extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi, Now going back to the scapula, um, you have two scapulae right here. Um, lateral rotation, if you look at this way, that's lateral rotation. Your traps, upper traps, and your serratus are going to do that. Medial rotation going the other way, your levators and your rhomboids will do that. Elevate, so if you have tightness here, your scapula is going to remain elevated. So if you have tightness in your upper trap, rhomboids, and levator, which is very common from poor posture, uh, these will become tight. Uh, so you really want to work the serratus and the lower traps to get this to depress and work on your posture. So uh, serratus anterior and lower trap are probably two extra really good uh, muscles to target for ideal posture. Uh, retraction, rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, and protraction, pec minor and serratus anterior. 
Muscles acting on the arm. Again, this is just a good review. Here's the pectoralis major that flexes AD ducts and medially rotates the humerus. Uh, deltoid can flex, extend, medially rotate, or AB duct the arm, depending on which fibers are active. Now, I'm going to uh, introduce you to EMG studies. And EMG studies, uh, what they do is they put electrodes on certain muscles, and they'll have them do the exercise, and they'll see which muscles are recruited the most, which muscle fibers, uh, during a specific exercise. So when you look at mean, they looked at better for bodybuilding because it provided a constant tension. When they looked at peak, that was better for sports specific max tension at a specific point. So if you're just trying to build your body and look good, then use the mean um, and peak. But sometimes there's uh, exercises that cross over that are good for the mean and peak and they cross over to multiple things. So try to look for those. So let's look at the upper pec. You want a good upper pec, you can do a mid pulley crossover, band push up, or a JC band press, and that will be good for bodybuilding. For sports performance, uh, dumbbell incline press, the guillotine press, JC band press. Now, if you look at upper, mid, and lower, the guillotine press seems to be a great exercise based on EMG, but again, this is a very dangerous exercise. So don't do this without spotting. Don't do this with a lot of weight. Uh, um, if you don't do a spotter, you can do some serious damage and uh, uh, hurt yourself permanently. But if you have a partner and do this with, it's a great exercise. Uh, mid pecs, if you want dumbbell bench press, floor press, um, dumbbell bench press for peak. Lower pec, you can do weighted dips. Be careful with weighted dips because of shoulder, anterior uh, subluxation. There's a lot of things you have to be careful with dips, overhead military press, all those. Um, blast strap push up, a guillotine press, uh, uh, guillotine press. Man, look at this guillotine press. It's, it's, from an EMG standpoint, this seems to be the standout winner here. Um, for medial triceps, you can do rope extension, cable extension. Um, you can also do diamond push ups. Okay. Oh man, look at the delts on this guy. It's amazing. Oof. So the deltoid originates on the clavicle, scapular spine, the chromium, inserts on the deltoid tuberosity, the humerus, the nerve supplies, the axillary nerve, and then the coracobrachialis originates from the coracoid process, goes to the arm, right? Medial aspect of shaft of humerus. So some, this is named for a reason. It goes from the coraco to the brachialis, from the coracoid process to the arm. So this name for a reason. Deltoid is named because it's deltoid shaped. Okay? And it's innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. So if you look at EMG studies for the shoulders, you're like, okay, what are the best uh, EM, uh, front, mid, and rear delt exercises? Well, for mean, you can do seated behind the neck press, but again, I'm not a big fan of seated behind the neck press. I'm not a big fan of seated military press. Um, so from a front deltoid, also people have a pretty good front delts. It's usually the middle delt and the real delt that they're lacking. So the best exercise is the band face pull. I love the band face pull because it gets middle delt, rear delt, and really can help with uh, posture. Uh, so we'll try to get that as much as possible. And uh, you can look on YouTube on Athlete X, and he'll show you a proper way to do that. The lateral raise for middle delts, um, but the bent over rear delt raise for real delts. Okay, so again, uh, this is here. Upper trap, you don't really need to emphasize the upper trap. People have overactive upper trap, so doing more exercises to get your upper trap will just take away from your lower trap, which is what I want you to emphasize more. We continue with uh, Terry's major extends immediately rotates the humerus and then the lats AD duct extend and immediately rotate the humerus as well. All right. Now the gun show. We're going to talk about biceps and triceps. Okay. Tiger Schaff and Richard Groshen. They're guns. Guns of steel. If you look at <clears throat> the origins, the long head, superglenoid tubercle, short head is the coracoid process. Okay. Inserts on the tuberosity of the radius. Muscular, when you think of biceps, you think of muscle anyway, so that's musculocutaneous nerve. Triceps, okay, long head, infraglenoid tubercle, scapula, lateral, medial heads. Inserts on the lecronon, and nerve supply is the radial nerve. So what are the best exercises for biceps? 
Well, you could do weighted uh, wide parallel grip pull-ups, weighted chin-ups, but the barbell curl seems to be the easiest and probably the safest. Again, for sports performance, the easy bar curl works good. For lats, we can do weighted chin-ups, weighted pronated grip pull-ups, the rack pull. The rack pull is good for both, weighted pronated wide grip, uh, underhand grip, feet elevated, inverted rows. Uh, middle trap, I really want you to work, but really I want you to work the lower trap. The middle trap, you can do prone trap raises, uh, dumbbell bent over rows, dumbbell elbows at, but the lower trap, do dumbbell elbows out, chest supported row, prone trap raise, or a dumbbell bent over row seems to work really well with these. Um, all right. So again, finding what EMG studies do, and with technology nowadays, we can get the most bang for our buck and really target the right muscles with the right exercise.